Hello, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we are going to be talking about rank 10 3 new equips. You know, should we put it up? Should we put it down? Who wears what? Does Cockroach get the booties? Spoiler alert, she never get the booties. But essentially, I'm going to be running through the new items that we are about to get, I believe, in about a week and a bit. And we'll have a look at which characters should be pushed to 10 3, which ones should be reserved to 9 6, and which ones need to have like special kind of conditions. And on top of that, I'm going to explain exactly why these groupings are made. Okay, with that being said, let's head on to this Chinese chart. I'm sure you guys have seen this before. This has been spread around Discord and Reddit so everywhere. However, it is never good to follow these blindly because as you can see, there is like a wiped out white space thing over here. And it's because this was formerly Ilya. So you just need to know like the logic behind a lot of these decisions. Okay, so let's start off with this chart, this diagram. In summary, this is a pretty good, a great overview as to what you should be doing if you are very serious about clan battle. I'm going to start this entire video off by saying if you are not like following really hardcore Chinese timelines, these charts pretty much mean nothing to you. If you're A, only going to auto battle or B, you're not at like level cap and stuff, then you guys might as well just slam all of the equips on to be honest. However, as always, if you do have any intention of going like really hardcore or like following timelines down to the millisecond, then like this is definitely for you. However, generally the advice for this is also holding true. And let me explain to you the logic as to why they're grouping. And so you can decide for yourself whether it is worth following this or not. Okay, so let's have a look at 10-3 recommended. So you can see generally it's mages and tanks. So let's talk about tanks first. The first thing you realize is that Nozomi is not actually there. And that is going to be a little bit important later on. Remember that one of Nozomi's key skills is her taunt. The second thing is that you see the majority of mages here. The third observation is that the majority of our physical DPS stays at 9-6. After that, you see the majority of our supports like the healers and Maho. Yui, Chika, they're all 9-6 as well. And then after that, we have some of these really specialized units down here. So Jun, Yukari, and Shinobu, as well as Makoto, who does not wear the left center equip, because as you guys know, like the left center equip is just like pure, pure defense. That is not something you want on Makoto. Boiler alert, at 10-3, it doesn't get any better for her. Then lastly, we have the two Kokoros, who only wears the upper left and the upper right equips. This is essentially Kokoro's most stable state in this kind of era. Just in like the Chinese timelines, Kokoro dodging is is like one of the most important things that you want her to not do. And so that is the logic for that one. Okay, so with these observations in mind, let's head over to this guy over here. So this is just Akari, but I just wanted to show you guys what the next rank looks like. So as you can see, 10-3 is going to be these guys over here. We're ranked 10 over here, and you can see that we have two of the pre-existing items. The third one, the top right-hand corner, is going to be a new weapon. So this is what 10-3 looks like. Then what does 9-6 look like? So if I go back to 9-6, you're going to be able to see, you're going to see that exact same angel staff looking thing and so this is actually like common to all of the characters getting 10-3. If you're going to be going to 10-3 you're going to be farming a lot of these guys probably are like 40 to 60 of them for each character just to be able to make it to 10-3. So back over here you'll notice these two equips and then if I go back up to 10 you can see that they're using like the previous rank kind of equips. Hopefully by now you guys are starting to get the pattern where the right hand side are typically the ones from the previous rank and the left hand side are like completely new equips. Typically speaking most of the time this is the case. And so the first observation that can be made for everybody is that these can be pre-farmed. So if you guys have a lot of these kinds of equips as well as like the sun amulets. So let me show you like Shiori's library so you can see Shiori's bow as well as the sun amulets over here. So if I go over to let's say Eriko, she's probably going to use the sun amulets as well. And voila, there you go, the sun amulet as well as the axe from the previous rank. And so voila, as you can see, bam, corresponding. These are all corresponding. So the moral of the story here is that you can pre-farm for 10-3. You can pre-farm these two items at least. Don't worry guys, I'll drop the links to all of these websites down in the description below. And if I have missed something, please let me know so that I can get it up for you guys. Okay, next. What is next? So the logic as to why these characters are arranged in the way that they are. To understand this, we have to head over to pre-calc and thank you so much Andrew for like introducing me to this feature. So as you can see, we have the equipment data as well as the equipment rank stat comparison data. However, what you're going to notice is that all of the names as well as the data up here, it's referencing JP. And so the creator of this site actually taught me this. If you go up to the cog wheel, you can actually select the JP data source. So what this does is that it actually lets us look ahead because like if you use the EN data, you're not going to be able to see all of like the 10.3 or the 9.6. Okay guys, with that being said, I want to introduce you guys to a couple of the key stats that are in this chart. You guys already know the first one that's most important is the TP boost. So as you can see, Lima is at the top there, TP boost. She's getting more effective HP at 10 three she's an easy 
easy like 10-3. And then we have a look, we see Miyako there and we have Miyako over here as well. Miyako also seems to be gaining effective health as well, which is really good. So after all of these positive gains in TP boost, as you can see, old mate Rin over here is getting three TP boosts. She's going to 10-3 for sure. We're going to go down and have a look and we're going to see mages and they're not getting any TP boosts. However, if you look closely, the majority of them are actually going to get magic attack boosts. And bam, bam. Another one over here, another one over here, another one over here. We do see Io losing 122 magic attacks. So if we go back over here, you see 96 Io, she is still 96. That is why she is classified there. Okay, so back over here, let's have a look at some more examples. So this is one that I see, Chika. As we know, the healers are being told to retain 96. And so let's have a look at why. She's losing a lot of HP and physical defense. So it looks like she's going to be losing a lot of effective physical HP. However, on the other hand, she is gaining some magic attack and magic crit rate. Magic crit rate is useless for for her but magic attack is pretty good she is also getting magic defense which is nice but i think the biggest thing for her that she's losing is tp retain tp retain is just so massive so like for you guys who don't know what tp retain is tp retain is when you finish using your ub that character will actually be left with some of the tp so what i mean by that is that if she has five tp retain after she uses her ub at a thousand tp she's going to retain five percent of it if she had five tp retain and so if a full tp bar is a thousand she will get back 50 tp after using her ub and so therefore, what that means is that the more TP retain you have, the more frequently you'll be able to use your UB. This in conjunction with TP boosts are probably two of the most important stats. And so as you can imagine, if you're losing five TP retain here, and then you're losing some from Maho, as well as some of the other supports, like I see Misato, I see Yui, then it's completely obvious as to why you would leave them at 9-6. And so I believe the chart has these ladies appropriately classified at 9-6. Okay, after that, I think we're going to start getting towards our physical DPSs. Here we go. All right, all right. As you can see, we are losing a lot of TP boost for a lot of these characters. Jun is not even considered, but the first one I want to talk about is Nozomi versus Pekrin. And the reason I want to talk about these two is because if I come back over here, you see that Pekrin is actually in 10-3 recommended, even though she is losing TP boost. On the other hand, you see Nozomi over here that is retaining 9-6. And the reason is because Nozomi's taunt is just so massive, especially in Arena. Nozomi and Monica together, both are so important in catching Tamakis. Typically, when you're facing like a Miyako Tamaki team, you're going to be taking Nozomi and Monika. Right before Tamaki gets her UB, Nozomi and Monika are able to actually get Nozomi's UB off. And so therefore, Nozomi is actually able to tank the Tamaki. And so hopefully you're going to have a bunch of mages as well that are going to be safe from Tamaki's UB. I'm pretty sure not a single mage actually lives from Tamaki's UB right now. Okay, so then why is Pekarin up to 10-3? Because her UB isn't exactly that critical. Pekarin, as you can see, is gaining an insane amount of effective physical HP as well as effective magic HP. As as a tank, this is really, really freaking good. And if her UB does not really contribute to that too much, then like this is a no-brainer. You go 10-3 with this. Okay, okay. So next, who are we looking at? We are looking at all of these people with like the negative five TP boosts. All of these carries, these very, very sorrowful carries. You can see all of the archers are losing 10 TP boost, which is absolutely massive to be honest. The Ninon's losing 15. We've got Makoto losing 15. We've got Kari losing 17. Like 9-6 is just really the place to be for all of the physical carries carries. So a quick reminder on TP boost, remember that every point of TP boost corresponds to one percentage increase in like gaining TP. So normally if you would have taken damage that would have given you 200 TP and for example if you had 10 TP boost then you would actually gain 220. 200 plus 10 percent of what you would have gained. And so yeah that is a major driver as to why all of these physical carries are probably not going to be going up. That amount of TP boost just completely outweighs the amount of stats that they get. Even the physical attack like they're getting nice physical attack but like this this, this could really make or break like some of the comps. However, what I do want to draw your attention to is this accuracy. You can see that the archers are finally getting some accuracy and for all of you arena players, you guys should rejoice. I don't know how many times my Susana has missed her UB on Kuka, but like hopefully this is going to alleviate the problem. However, 10-3 is not the time to do it because again, they're going to be losing the TP boost. Very, very soon, they'll be able to get that bow. It's actually this one over here. Let me show you guys quickly the stats of this gorgeous, gorgeous bow. Uh, it is, I think it's this one right here. So as you can see, it's giving us attack but most importantly it's giving us five accuracy at base rank when you refine five it doubles so you get 10 accuracy from this however when we get 10 4 and even go beyond like we're going to get more and more accuracy so your archers are hopefully going to stop missing those freaking tanks okay so now that we've covered off all of the physical dps i think that's actually it for the chart so let's have a quick look at what is left and i think that's kind of it so just looking at this again generally mages are going to be going to 10 3 and the reason is because they gain a lot of attack and are not losing tp boost 
boost. The tanks generally are going to be gaining effective HP and so they are going to 10-3 as well. However, the exception is Nozomi because she needs to get her taunt off. And because she will be losing TP boost if she goes to 10-3, you'd rather her stay at 9-6. She really needs to keep her mages alive. On the other hand, the exception to the mages is Eo, as you saw because she is going to be losing a significant amount of magic attack. On the other hand, we observe that all of the supports, especially the healing supports, because they are losing TP retain, they are going to be staying at 9-6. And then finally, the majority of the physical DPS are going to be staying at 9-6 because they are losing all of that TP boost. And then we've got Makoto who stays at 9-5 because we don't want to wear that piece of crap armor. Okay, before we wrap it up, let me just talk about Ilya really quick. Ilya is another mage exception and the reason is because if we go back over here, we'll see Ilya is right here and Ilya is losing a whole bunch of magic effective HP. However, that is not really the killer here. The real killer is magic crit rate and as you can imagine, if you're giving Ilya even more crit rate, she's just getting a bigger and bigger chance to destroy herself with her own skills with the self crit rate. She might crit herself with her own skills and at that point usually she is pretty donezo. And it's so for that reason that you want to keep her at 9-6. As for these guys down here, these are very very specific like CB requirements. Unfortunately the equips just don't justify for them to go to 9-6. 8-6 actually provides them like the perfect amount of like TP boost as well as like the healing. However if you do plan on autoing I still would probably recommend you just slam them to 10-3. But again if you have any intentions on following like CN timelines then just follow this it's 8-6. Okay guys I think that essentially covers off everybody in this chart but even if I didn't I went through the thought process as to how each of these characters ended up on this chart like this. So what you can do is if I did miss someone you just apply that logic you just look at the TP boost you look at the retain you look at what they're gaining and what they're losing and see if it makes sense for them. If you guys do have any questions about any of them like you're unsure just drop by the discord and we'll definitely sort you out. But again generally this chart is pretty accurate. Okay with that being said let me wrap things up here. I've got a secret message guys um where's my tp boost if you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below i would really appreciate it. it lets me know that you've made it to the end of the video and i'm really grateful because i do spend a lot of time like doing these analysis and stuff and cutting these videos takes a long ass time but with that being said you guys already know what's coming if you guys found this video helpful or kind of entertaining consider a like a sub a comment a follow and all of that if you guys need some help drop by the discord there are some like ways to support the channel in the description below but otherwise thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye